Here are some tips for using your new HP ProBook 6460B laptop computer. First, here are some specifications. I know this information seems a bit technical, but it's handy to know when you're looking at possible new software or peripherals that you want to use with these machines. The processor, or brain of the computer if you will, is an Intel Core i5 processor that runs at a speed of 2.5 GHz. There are 4 GB of RAM in these laptops and the hard drive is capable of holding 300 GB of information. There is a built-in optical drive that is capable of reading and burning to CD-ROMs and DVDs. There's also a built-in Wi-Fi adapter that allows you to connect to wireless networks and a Bluetooth adapter that will allow you to connect to certain kinds of wireless peripheral devices. So now, let's look at the laptop and its parts. To begin with, you open the laptop by sliding the latch cover to the right and then lifting the cover monitor and when you close it, the cover will click shut so that you know that it's closed. At the top of the display, you'll notice there's a built-in camera and there's a small light that will come on when the camera is active. To the right and the left of the camera are two small holes that act as microphones. On the left side of the laptop, there are some ports that you can use to connect peripheral devices. From back to front, here's where the power supply connects. Next we have a port called a 1392 port, or sometimes referred to as a firewire port. This is where you can connect a digital video camera. Next to that we have two USB ports for plugging in a mouse, a smart board, or a printer. Below the USB ports you'll see a slot that's available for inserting the memory card from a digital camera. This makes transferring your photos from a digital camera quick and easy. Next to that we have the drawer for the CD-ROM DVD drive. To open the drawer, simply press the button you find here. The drawer will pop open, slide it out, then insert the CD or DVD so that it snaps onto the spindle in the center of the drive. Then simply push the drawer shut. When you want to eject the CD, simply do the same thing. Press the button, the drawer will pop open, and then snap the CD off of the spindle. On the left side of the front edge of the computer, you'll find this area where there are some lights that indicate certain features of your laptop and whether or not they are in use. Going from left to right, the first light shows an antenna icon. When this light is white, then your wireless adapter is working. It will turn amber when you turn the wireless feature off. The next icon indicates whether or not the laptop is turned on. When the laptop is powered up, the light will be white. When it is asleep, it will be blinking. When the light is off, the computer is either shut down or in hibernation. Next is the battery indicator light. If the light is amber colored, then the battery is charged from 0 to 90 percent. If the light is white, then the battery is charged from 90 to 99 percent and the power cord is plugged in. When the light turns amber and begins to blink, it's an indication that the power cord is unplugged and that the battery is running low. The faster the light blinks, the weaker the battery is. If the light is off, that means either the computer is turned off or if it's on then it indicates the battery is fully charged. The light next to the last icon indicates that the laptop is accessing the hard drive. It's normal for this light to flash intermittently while you're using the computer. On the right hand side of the laptop you'll find some more ports. From left to right the first is the audio headphone jack. You can plug in a set of headphones, earbuds, or a set of computer speakers into this port. Next is the audio in or microphone port. The next port 
is a combination eSATA USB port. eSATA devices include things like high-speed external hard drives, but you can also use this as a regular USB port. The next port is simply another USB port. Finally, the next one is for connecting an optional display device, such as a high-performance monitor or projector. At present, we do not have any such devices, and you will not have to use this port. Along the back side of the laptop, you'll find three more ports, going from left to right. First is a modem port. It's doubtful you'll ever use this port. Next is an external monitor port. This is where you will connect your computer to a projector. Finally is another port that looks very much like the modem port, but it's a little bit wider. This is the network port where you can plug in the Ethernet cable to get connected to your network. To plug in your network cable, simply make sure that the little locking tab is facing up and push the connector in until you hear it snap. To disconnect your network cable, simply push down on the locking tab and pull the network cable out. It is normal for the little light to blink next to the network port while you're using your computer. Now let's take a look at the keyboard section of the laptop. Along the top of the keyboard, near the bottom of the display, there are four buttons. On the left is the power button. Simply press the power button to turn your computer on. If your computer is already on, pressing the power button logs you off and shuts the computer down. If your computer goes to sleep or into hibernation mode, you can use the power button to wake up your computer and log back in if necessary. The other three buttons are along the right-hand side of the keyboard. The one on the left has the same antenna icon that we saw with the lights on the front of the laptop. This button turns off the Wi-Fi adapter. The next button with the globe icon automatically launches Microsoft Internet Explorer and gives you access to the Internet. The last button on the right is a mute button and silences the speaker. Pressing it again turns the speaker back on. Now let's have a look at the actual keyboard. The top row of keys on the keyboard are called function keys. Many pieces of software use these buttons for several functions, hence the name. However, you can use some of these keys to perform other tasks. For example, if you look at the F3 key, you'll see that it also has a moon icon on it. This indicates that the F3 button can also be used to put the laptop to sleep. To do that, first press and hold the FN key, which is right next to the control key, then press the F3 key. It's like using the shift key to type a capital letter. The same technique can be used with the F6 and F7 buttons. In this case, F6 lowers the volume setting on the laptop and F7 increases the volume. Likewise, F9 decreases your screen brightness and F10 increases it. The F4 button also has a very useful feature, which we'll come back to later. One other function key allows you to use a hidden numeric keypad on the keyboard. Note that one of the keys in the function button row is labeled scroll and numlk. If you press the FN and then this key, you'll see a small light come on. At that point, you'll be able to enter numbers by using the M, period, JKL, semicolon, U, I, O, P, 7, 8, 9, and 0 keys, as you might use the number pad on a desktop computer. When you're finished entering numbers, press FN and scroll again to disable this feature and go back to regular typing. If you look very closely at the trackpad, you may notice a small dot in the upper left-hand corner. This is a spot you can use to temporarily disable your trackpad. If you double touch the dot, it will light up and the trackpad will be turned off. To turn it back on again, 
simply double touch it again and when the light is off the trackpad will work again. Finally, you can connect your laptop to a projector to use it as a presentation device. To do this, it's always best to start with your laptop shut down. Then, connect the projector cable to the external monitor port that we looked at earlier on the back of the laptop. It is not necessary to screw in the bolts that may be included on the connector. There are no holes to screw them into anyway. Once the connection is secure, turn on the projector, then turn on the laptop. As your laptop starts up, it should detect that it is connected to the projector and configure itself appropriately. During normal use of your laptop, you may find that you would like to connect your projector after you've started up your laptop, or perhaps you may forget to turn on the projector first. Don't worry, it's not necessary to start all over. This is where the F4 function button comes in. If you connect to a projector and then see the image from your laptop is not showing up on the screen, you can use FN and the F4 key combination to toggle through the four different display modes, which are laptop only, duplicate display, which is what you'll probably use most often, and then extended or projector only. Use the FN button and the F4 key to cycle through these different states. We hope you found this video to be useful and that you'll enjoy using your new laptop. If you have other questions about your new laptop, you can call the BOCES Help Desk at extension 12. Oh, seven.